Oh, so hi everyone. So, about three days ago, there was a pretty big announcement about AQ40 and what we can all expect. I thought I would make a pretty nice, well, pretty quick video about it, just so we can kind of see what's going to happen. I guess we should just jump right in. As we approach the content unlock next week, that will begin the events around the gates of Anchor Up, we've seen several questions from players about precisely how many aspects of the game are going to work. What follows is a rundown of some of these details. Spoiler alert, there's going to be quite a few spoilers, so if you guys would rather not know what's going to happen, then turn away now, I guess. First and foremost, we have the exact time of the content unlock. When Blackwing Lair resets, then you can expect the new content to come out, guys. So that's going to be on the 29th of July at 9 CES time slash 10 msk time so whatever time your server usually resets for blackwing lab this is the time when the war effort will begin and each faction can turn in immense amounts of supplies that once completed will require five days to be transported to syllabus due to the raid requirements in the quest chain leading up to the banger gong quest the earliest that the gong ringing can occur in Tilifus on highly motivated realms will be just over a week. You're so slow! Just to summarise guys, you're going to have to turn in tons and tons of resources and basically when you've turned in enough um, and when you've completed the quest, someone will be able to bang the gong and that um, kind of starts the event, okay? Once the gong is rung on a realm, the 10 hour war begins. Once the 10 hours has elapsed, Banger Gong can never be turned in anymore. The two Ankara braids will open, and Treasures of the Timeless One quest will become available. So, yeah, you're gonna have to, if you wanna do this event, guys, you're gonna have to be pretty darn fast and pretty active. So, the act. The exact times for ringing of the gong and therefore the raid opening 10 hours later will differ on each realm. So it really depends on how much effort the whole realm puts in guys. I expect my realm's going to be really quite motivated. Ringing the gong can only be done by players who have completed all of the steps of the scepter of the sands quest chain before the end of a 10 hour window. In addition to raid requirements, Players are able to use the proxy of Nozdormu to deputise other players to help them amass Silifid Carapace fragments. Now, if you guys don't know, we've already been gathering some of these. You need to basically kill the bugs in Silifus to get the fragments. And this is likely a guildwide effort to help the chosen individual complete the quest chain line. So, if I just move this out of the way for a sec. Look, there's a little island here. I'm curious. I wonder what that island... Oh my gosh, and I'm dying of fatigue. So where am I on the map? Oh, okay. I know what that is. That's the underwater area, isn't it? Only the first player on the realm to ring the gong will be announced across the zone of Silifus. On realms that have multiple layers, once the gong is rung on one layer, the 10-hour war will begin on all layers. All players who complete the questline and turn in Banger Gong before the 10 hours are up will receive the Black Kurabi Resonating Crystal Mount. Any players who complete the questline up through the Might of Kalendor will be eligible for Treasures of the Timeless One, which rewards an epic weapon regardless of whether they were able to complete Banger Gong in time. So I guess that's sort of like a runner-up prize? Some restrictions apply. In original WoW, the Scarab Lord wasn't used as a title, and that will be the case in WoW Classic. The ability of players to manage their titles came after the original WoW. So, um, During the 10-hour war, world bosses do not only spawn in Silifus. Resonating crystals that spawn major enemies will appear in Tanaris. Fear Alas, A Thousand Needles, and The Barons. This is important to know because we expect 
there to be an overcrowding issue in Silithus on realms whenever large groups of players all go to Silithus at the same time. When the negative effects of overcrowding can't be eliminated, thanks to players who helped us test on the PTR in June, we can support higher numbers of players in the zone than we could before. These PTR tests also helped us determine the maximum number of players that can be supported before a little laggy becomes unplayable. And once the maximum is reached, players will automatically be removed from the zone. But there are several caveats. First, players will be removed if they are below level 60. Alliance players will be ported to Westfall. Horde players will be ported to the Barons. So, if you're under level 60 and there's an overcrowding problem, you're going to be ported out, guys. Level 60 players who are ported out will be moved to Amgoro Crater, Sinaris, Thousand Needles of the Barons. Everyone has something special to offer. If Silithus is at max population, a level 60 player can only enter when another player leaves the zone. So this is going to be really interesting, guys. I'm just imagining uh, everyone sort of standing at the border waiting to go into the zone. Um, it's going to be quite interesting, I think. Players who have the Scepter will never be automatically removed from Silithus. So get the Scepter and you won't be kicked out. They'll treat you with a bit of respect, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I've been in um, the capital cities when they've been like super crowded, obviously. I think most people have. And, you know, the lag is pretty phenomenal. So I, I guess this kind of makes sense. Zone maximums and automatic adju adjustments are per layer. So bear that in mind. There are restrictions on realm to realm character transfers, which are in place to prevent players of a different realm from coming to your realm and disrupting the progress of the event. So I could imagine people would turn up hypothetically, buy up all the sort of carapaces and all the stuff off the auction house and then leave again. Um, I, I hear people have already done this in the past where they sort of jump from server to server. In, in fact, I think whole guilds have done it. So it'd be kind of interesting to see uh, how that plays out. The quest Bang a Gong cannot be completed by characters who transferred to the realm in the past 90 days. However, these players can complete Treasures of the Timeless One before the end of the 10-hour war on a realm. There are also other restrictions on transfers of characters um, who have participated in significant event activities elsewhere. For example, players cannot transfer a character that has um, Silithus carapace fragments in a bag or in their inventory or their bank. <laughs> um, and then the initial war effort requires a great deal of supplies to be turned in by your faction on the realm. If this is not completed within 30 days after the content is unlocked, small amounts of supplies will begin turning in automatically as they did in the original version of 1.12 of original WoW. The gates still require somebody to bang a gong, but this will help ensure that all realms have the chance to unlock Anchor Up before next Ramis is released. It's kind of interesting that they're talking about a month. Is next Ramis going to be released in a month? Uh, I haven't seen anything that kind of says this. You! Standing in quicksand. Quicksand? Yikes! Panic! My feeling is maybe a month and a half would be kind of sensible, I guess. So you're talking about six weeks. And you know, time actually goes really quick in the World of Warcraft universe, so we're very excited to follow the unfolding events on WoW Classic Realms around the world over the next few weeks. We'll see you all in Silithus. What do you think, guys? To be honest, I really want to see who's actually going to be handing stuff in, and I really want to see which realm's going to be first. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be probably a lot of um, streamers and stuff doing insane stuff, and... <laughs> I, I just kind of think that it's just going to be a heck of a lot of uh, fun kind of participating in a great war effort. Uh, the other thing that I'm sort of thinking is there's probably going to be um, a huge amount of inflation 
in the cost of a lot of goods. So you may want to stock up on certain supplies. Um, personally, I've stocked up on greater nature resistance pots because then you need a lot of nature resistance in these dungeons, okay? So um, I kind of expect to see a bit of a price rise. I spent about 300 gold on the pots the other day, guys. And in a way, I kind of regret it because now I've got no working capital to get more money. Um, <laughs> but... Um, Anyway, um, I guess I'll leave it there, guys. But, yeah, do let me know what you think and like and subscribe and things, and I'll speak to you soon. Move slowly and you'll be a... Phew. Even you can learn something from a sloth.